whether you're a tour pro on the television, a recreational golfer, or someone who just plays every now and again, every single golf shot that we hit should all be the same. I'm gonna tell you why in this lesson. Let's find out. So we're here on the 17th tee at Warrington. It's a par five, 510 yards. And the last few times that I've played this hole, if we just have a look down now, I've actually ended up in those, in the gorse, just over the top of the bunkers there. And as we see the uh, flyover of the hole, we'll see that the bunkers are 215, 235 and 255 with the gorse 280 to carry it. Now, what every golf sh should have is an intention. And what I mean by that, as I come to this tee here and I stand here, what I've been doing is thinking, well, it's a par five. I wanna get down as far as I can, because if I do, I'll generally only have about a six or a seven iron in if I get a really good one away. And then that could set off an eagle chance. But what I've done, like I say, last five times I've played is move the ball left in towards that rubbish found a couple of them, lost a couple of them. So not great because my intention is just to hit it as far as I can down here. I've not been thinking about the trouble as well. That was my driver shot. If I and I came and changed my intention, what I'm basically doing is giving my golf swing a roadmap. And despite our level of play, whether you're a beginner or a tour pro on the telly or someone who's playing in your club comps every week, I want you to answer the question, can you honestly say every shot you hit, you give yourself a clear message of what it is you want to do? For me, I know it's no, I don't. There's some shots that I go into and I just think, oh, just put it over there, that'll do. And I just get a little bit lackadaisical as well. Now, this hole, I'm gonna play it differently today. We're gonna to go down onto the fairway after we've hit this one and see what the intention would be there as well. But now I know that that left-hand side has been trouble for me. My driver's been going towards it. It's 510 yards the hole. This club, my three wood goes 260. So if I hit this, I've only got another 250 to go. It's a par five, so I might be able to get a good one away and get up in two or get very close in two. So what I'm now gonna do is say, well, I don't wanna be on the left-hand side because I know that's where the trouble is. There's about 40 yards fairway to the right-hand side. So I'm actually gonna say, I'm gonna hit a little fade off the shed that we can see in the distance. And that, as I choose that shot now, is giving me an idea of how I want to swing the golf club. So I've chose the shot, a fade, we're gonna call it a five yard fade. So I now know as I make my practice swing, I get the feel of the swing that I want to make. So as I now come and hit this golf ball, I've got a clear intention, I've got a clear feeling of the swing. So as I stand over it, instead of thinking about all those times I've hit it in the rubbish, I can stand here with a good feeling make a committed golf swing because I've got the right intention for this shot. Okay, guess what? We're not in the rubbish down the right. We're just on the right hand side of the fairway and I'm safe away. This time I'm not picking my ball out of a gorse bush all because I had that right intention. Let's get down to the fairway and carry this lesson on. So as we can see here, Gorse is on the other side over there. We've got the bunkers back there, 255. So we've got about 270 down this right-hand side. It's just caught the rough, but like I said a moment ago, it's better from being over there trying to find the golf ball. So again, now this is where my intention comes into play because I've got to a point now where I've got to make a decision. And I would imagine a lot of golf swings that you guys are making who are watching this are made with a lot of indecision because as we stand over it now, I've got 230, I think it was, two, yeah, 230 to the flag, and then it's 165 to cover the water. Now, what a lot of people would do would stand here and think, well, ooh, 165, I could get my three wood over that, but I'm not confident with it. Mm, should I do it? Should I not? Well, oh, go on, I'll give it a go. And your main thought is, am I actually making the correct decision here as you're making your golf swing, which we know isn't a good thought and the right intention to have. What I now want to do once I've got a couple of yardage or I've got a bit of information about the hole, I can make an informed decision and actually create the right intention. So for me, 235 to the flag, it's 200 to the front of the green, 165 to clear the water. So what I can do, I know that I fly a five iron 
200 yards. So I know that that's gonna to go towards the front of the green. It's gonna safely cover the water, so that really comes out of my mind now. My only real intention for this shot is that there is a bunker front left, so I can say to myself, well, I can start it at the middle of the green with a little fade again, and that should feed me up onto the right-hand side of the green and give me a chance for a two-putt birdie as I was going through, instead of having thoughts of, well, is this the right club? So I've selected my shot. I know it's that five-yard fade from the middle of the green. I've got the right club. The lie actually looks pretty decent and might pop it a little bit higher. So again, I'm gonna make a practice swing now with the intention of hitting a five yard fade that builds the feeling in. So at least I've got an idea or giving myself a fighting chance of actually getting the ball somewhere towards where I want to instead of just standing over it and deciding at the top of the backswing what shot I want to try and hit. So let's give this one a little rip. Started it a little bit too right, but again, because I've made good decisions, it's just gone into the bunker on the right-hand side of the green there. So if I would have stood over that with no clear idea of what I wanted to do, who knows what we were gonna get. I might have duffed it into the water because I was thinking about the water too much. I might have pulled it left. A number of things can happen, at least there. Yes, it was a bit of a push fade, but I got the shape of shot I wanted to do because I'm getting my intentions right and I'm building the feelings from there. Let's get down to the green and see if I can make this birdie. So I found the bunker. I've taken everything else out of play up the front there and a pretty simple shot for me. So once we start to do this, like I say, even despite your ability level, at least if you're giving yourself some good direction, you've got a good chance of making the swing instead of standing over it and thinking, what do I do here? How do I make this draw happen? How do I make this fade happen? Or how do I hit this bunker shot? At least when I come in here now, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of sand. So I know that I don't need to be too aggressive down into it. I can slide the club a little bit more, but it all comes back to that intention. If I stand over it with no real clue of what I'm about to do, how can I learn from that? And how can I judge whether I got it right or wrong? This shot here for me, not much sand, like I say, so it will pop out a little bit. I'm gonna fly it three quarters of the way, hopefully. Not gonna have as much loft on the face. I'm not gonna open it as much as I normally would because I want it to have a little bit of run. But now I'm building a picture once I'm de deciding this. I've got the intention of landing it three quarters of the way with my run. I know how far I should be swinging it, what trajectory I want to have it at. And at least I've built that picture so I can stand over this now and make another confident golf swing. Go on then, go on, go on. And I think we'll call that a tap in, give me. And again, it's all down to that intention. If I stood here and just sort of blasted that out, I wouldn't have had any idea of what the sand was like, how far I needed to go, but having the right intention I'll rake that in a second if we just wander down. Gives me a clear picture. And I think a lot of golfers out there are making mistakes and building bad scores, not through bad golf swings, but through bad decisions. We all have the ability to make good, in, good decisions and have the right intention as we stand over any golf shot. If we stand there with no intention, and then make poor decisions, we can't then blame the golf swing because we didn't actually give ourselves a guide of what we wanted to do. So guys, go through that again. And like I said, if you can answer that question on every golf shot you hit out on the golf course, do you have an intention for it? Once you get to that stage, hopefully we're gonna to start to be playing a lot better golf regardless of what your swing is like. Something that doesn't require you to work on your swing, but will help you get your scores down. So guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you've enjoyed it, hit that like button as well. I want you to get better at golf and you're gonna do that by hitting that subscribe button down there for me. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go and write that bunker now.